is always on every song I write. There's never a moment in a song that doesn't reflect on where I came from, and I love writing songs that mean something from experience. It's always based on a true story. I grew up in Dixon, California. It's peaceful, it's calm, it's a very small town. It's slow and nothing's changed, that's what I love about it. It's all about open space for me. I wish every kid could grow up in Dixon. He was a good kid. When he was young, he loved music. So even when he couldn't sing or talk, he would dance. He was known as the dancer in crowds. Really cute. I mean, he would really get a crowd going in a circle to watch him dance. I want to see if I've been working on the railroad. I'm working on the railroad. He would sing in the car. I mean, you would turn the radio on, he'd be singing in his car seat in the back. And the more attention he got, the worse he got. He just wanted a crowd. Hello, Mama. He would pick up anything. A broomstick, he used that a lot. He didn't really need a guitar. I did take him to guitar lessons at a very young age, and his teacher wanted to play nursery rhymes. Jonathan wanted to play George Strait. And he goes, if you would learn how to read music, then we'll work on George Strait. And that's how it started, and he never learned the nursery rhymes. Oh, brother. I met John when I was about, uh, I don't know, 17, 18. We'd go for rides in a pickup, listen to music, uh, pull off the side of the road, maybe have a beer or two, just hang out. When John comes into town, you hear about it throughout the multiple counties. Almost everybody wants to go see John. When I come home, my favorite thing is to call Joe. He's doing big things, man. He's planting olives, he's planting almonds. It's just fun to see a buddy that's really working hard. I work really hard at something way different, but we still love all the same stuff. John and I get in the Jeep and we get up to the top and it's a very special place for me and now it's a special place for John. I grew up going to the hills since I was seven. Take for granted, because you have it every day in your life, but then when you don't have it, it puts everything in perspective. When you work as many hours as the farmers and I do, it means a lot to me to be able to get out and let loose, and I think it's the same thing for John. When he gets in these hills up here, the work kind of goes by the wayside, and we enjoy every minute of it. All this stuff reminds me of how I grew up. The smell, the dryness, the dust. And it's super important to me. It's a whole different feeling than anywhere else. It's like roots. It's like a roots feeling. My name is Robert Robin, and I am the owner of Robin's Department Store in Dixon, California with my wife, Suzanne, and my girls come in and help me from time to time as well. That was your first stop if you didn't want to drive to somewhere else to get to a bigger store. You see if Robbie's had it. Something about that store has my son's heart. It's a big closet. He's always got cool Western shirts there. Lots of cowboy hats. It's not uncommon for us to have at least a minimum of about 600 hats in stock. One of the stories that I remember about John is at a wedding. He was somewhere between seven, eight years old. He comes out and brings his little guitar and starts singing away, and everybody was blown away. After he sang, I went up to John and I says, John, that's amazing. When did you start doing this? He says, Robbie, I started when I was three years old. I'm going to be famous someday. And I thought to myself, wow, this guy has a direction. I don't remember, but I like my style. John and my family, we grew up together, but we didn't really connect until after high school, and we've been best buds ever since. Kristen is a longtime friend of John's. She's been through a lot with him. 
Back in uh, middle school, when I went up to the Dixon Mayfair, he was singing with his alternative band. And I'm looking at this guy on stage. I'm like, who is that? When we connected after high school, it was almost exactly the same as when I saw him in middle school. Still singing, still had his guitar in hand almost everywhere that he went. And if it wasn't in the back of his mind, it was in the front of his mind. He was talking about it, making big plans, and he was just on his way. John's cool. I mean, his last name's Party. Let's get real. John and I grew up together in Dixon. He's always been a performer. Ever since I've known him, he's played guitar. Every outing that we went to, he would always have that guitar, and all the girls would <laughs> swarm. Anytime there was a house party, boom, guitar's coming out. There's no way John's not gonna have that on him. It definitely was a symbol of John. I think being on the road and having a little taste of home with him at all times can help out. Friends and good people will keep you grounded, but you have to have some kind of grounding in yourself. He takes care of his crew, he takes care of his band. I mean, he's got people that he's been playing with since he moved to Nashville. He's my buddy, man, he's my best friend. Surround yourself with uh, people that say you got a booger hanging out of your nose. If they don't tell you that, they're not a good friend. This is probably one of my favorite pictures of us because he's just always a comedian. Instead of standing there and posing, he does something silly. Oh, I love this picture. It's eighth grade graduation. He even uh, frosted his tips blonde. He's so handsome in these articles. John got his good looks from me. <laughs> Jonathan, party! If you know my mom, she's a sweetheart. My mom wants to help out everybody and she wants to feed you excessively. She was team mom. When my dad had to work all the time, you know, she, she did her best she could. As a grown man, I look back at all the things my mother went through. She's a strong person. She's bulldog crazy now. You probably got the bulldogs in there. John looked up to his dad a lot. That was probably one of his big heroes. His father was a very hardworking man and still is. John always wanted to follow in his footsteps. He can't write a song, but he can work his ass off. And he always tried to put that in me. John had his job. He had his job and he had his dream and he worked hard at both of them, always. John's dad and I had different ideas when it came to music. My parents and music was this. My mom was always there for me. My dad told me to get a job. But the combination of the two is what led me to work hard in the music business. So weekend warrior, working on the week, playing the nights on the weekend. I gave John one of his first jobs. He always had a great disposition. Everybody liked him and the customers liked him. I'm not sure how much work John got done at Buzz. Shortly after John started working here, he asked me if he could come down and perform. And I just expected him to come in and be okay. Like I wasn't really expecting anything. When he came in and he started performing, he was fantastic. He was much better than anybody I'd ever had to come in here. And he was this 17 year old kid. And so that kind of started the whole, well, I can play a bud. And of course, you know, the Buckhorn heard about it and they want me to come play. And it's like, you get this small time bar rivalry. John spent a lot of time at the Buckhorn, and he loved playing there. The Buckhorn Bar is fun. It's the bar that's kind of on the outskirts of our small town. I just wanted to have a fun place where anybody can come in that door, and when they leave, my goal is to say, that was fun. One of my fondest memories was Carrie Underwood played our local Mayfair. The Mayfair is a huge deal in Dixon. It's like a class reunion, local heroes, demolition derbies. It's just a big party. So she had her own concert at the fairgrounds, and we were playing at the Buckhorn. Myself and John came up with the idea to have an after party, talk to Rich. We made flyers for it. I mean, people came from all over, and there was no social media. We printed out all these flyers, we handed them out, bringing all the fans over to the Buckhorn to listen to my band. But their stipulation was they were only gonna hand them out to girls because once girls were coming, then all the guys were coming. We set up like a little lounge for them and we were just all gonna have a great time. And before I knew it, that place was packed. I mean, there was a line out the door. John did awesome and he had a little following, so that kind of helped too at that time. It was probably one of the most insane nights here and we had a great night. John leaving to go to Nashville was the hardest thing I ever went through. I left at 22, and I never really thought about 
what was not going to happen or what could have happened. I just went for it. Oh, I fell apart. I knew he had to go. I knew that's where he needed to be. But for me to know that he was going to be in another state, I hated it. I was so excited, and I was always had something in Nashville that just kept me going. John is the kind of guy who thrives on the go, go, go. You'll never see anyone argue the way that we do. And you'll also never see anyone support each other the way that we do. There's been many a times that John calls Kristen and says, Kristen, come on, let's go. Definitely some of my favorite memories are back before I think John had even bought his ticket to go to Nashville. He just pull up his car and hop in, and it was always just listening to music. We didn't always talk either, you know? It was just, let's just cruise. I mean, we could be gone for hours. When I get sad or something, or I'm frustrated with, with songs and stuff, she'll kind of like, just kind of make me feel better, which is nice to have as a friend. There was a time where I lived in LA, and I used to get these really bad anxiety attacks. John was actually one of the friends that I would call, even though he was in Nashville. He can calm you down, he'll take you down a notch. You know that you can count on him. Kristen was there when he got the record deal. At the time that they were doing showcases, I had told Kristen, you wanna go out this time? Because I was just there. And she goes, sure, you know, I'll go out. I remember being there, surrounded by all these people that I don't know. All of a sudden, the show is over. And I hadn't seen John for, I don't know how long, 30 minutes, maybe even an hour had passed before I decided, man, maybe I should go look for him. I walk outside across the street. He just like looks at me and the man is beaming. He called me on the phone and he said, mom. And I said, yeah. And he goes, I did it. I got the record deal. And then I started crying. I was like, oh my God. And he's going, mom, I'm trying to hold it together here. And I was like, oh, I can't believe it. The one time I don't go out there, you get the record deal. It was a confirmation. He did it. This is it. It was cool. Kristen, we, we celebrated that night, and uh, that's probably a night we'll never forget. He was born for this, right? He was born to be on stage. And a show now versus a show back then, <laughs> quite a difference. What's up, everybody? I've seen John live more times than I remember, and it never gets old. To see John play and singing the songs, it's almost overwhelming how proud you feel in that moment for your friend that you know worked so hard to get to where he is. It's like watching any of the major stars perform. He's really grown into his profession. I was just screaming and yelling, and I am so proud when I'm at one of his shows. This is John's recording studio, writing room. We call it Shelly's Honky Tonk because that's her house, and we just rebuilt the room up above the garage. It's just for music and hanging out. There's no TVs in there, but it's good for beer and drinks and playing music and dancing. My grandma was dancing up there when we were playing the record, so it kind of has that honky tonk vibe. This is the guest book for songwriters or artists that come and visit. This is Rhett Atkins and Luke Laird. Best part about having that studio at my mom's house was so I could come back and spend time with family and also work. And then we have the famous karaoke machine that John and my mom sang on. Okay, now John and I are going to sing the song. Sing, John. <laughs> Oh my God. Jonathan's grandmother had a karaoke machine and she would literally take him and they would be in that room for at least four or five hours a day. It's been a long time since I've heard him. She was teaching him what to do when he was on stage, how to bow, how to wave to the crowd with his hat and he truly enjoyed it. Awesome. <laughs> oh my God. Not counting you. We'd 
played Garth Brooks and George Strait. We had the little karaoke tapes that didn't have the vocals. We just knew all the words. She kind of really put that stamp on me to be funny, fun, outgoing, and not afraid to get on stage and entertain people. All right, that was Jonathan. He sang it all sometime back, but he had a cold, so it wasn't real good, but he's my, I'm his biggest fan. Oh my God. Makes me happy, but sad at the same time. Nobody can deny that he had a twang way back then when he was a baby. I can't tell you how proud I am of him and what he's done and the hard work has paid off for him. And it looks like, you know, he's on his way. For me in country music, I really don't have a specific way to talk about it. Everybody's like, what is this? What, you know what, it feels good right here. And that's all that matters to me. John's music is his passion. You can see it in there. You know, you can see people's passions and when they talk about their passions, it's genuine. They can't fake it. The reason he got where he is now is because of his drive and his goals. He always wants to be the best, and he never settles for anything. He doesn't take shortcuts, and I think that the Dixon community showed him that work ethic, and his priorities are right in that regard. Another girl, another dance to a country song. famous as he is today, he's never changed. He'll still come up to you and say, hi, how are you, and want to shake your hand, and how's everybody, how's the family, I'll, you know, ask about my wife and my kids, and he's just that kind of a guy. He was just always a real friendly, really nice kid and he's not really any different now. John has found that confidence that he needs to get on that stage every single night, and the one thing that he's stayed true to is he's still John, that doesn't change. He's still the same guy to me, and I even see the new people that he's working with, he's the same guy to them. Hey, here I go again, I'm drinking one, I'm drinking two, I got my heartache medication, a strong dedication to get I feel like country music fans never grow out of country music because it has a little bit more of a realness to it and it has more of an open heart where it's from the heart. I never heard somebody say, I tried country music once. It gets you through things and it's relatable and it goes great with beer. Even though he's made it, he's still John. Most of the time.